Management, and she's the owner of Med Koto. She obtained an MBBS from the University of Lagos College of Medicine in 2015. She's trained as a certified liposuction and in hair transplantation and other minimally and non-invasive procedure from the United States and the Esti Center Plastic Surgery Center in Istanbul, Turkey. She also trained at the DeSoto Family and Surgery Center, DeSoto, Texas, and the Business School Enterprise Development Center, Lagos. She is popular for carrying out cosmetic surgeries. She's the owner and founder of Med Couture's and has claimed to have carried out over 300 cosmetic surgeries. February 2019, a beauty queen, Uneka Miriam Onuziligo, died while undergoing Botox enlargement procedure at Medcotos. According to reports, Ms. Onuziligo was in coma for 31 days after the procedure before she eventually passed on. In April 2020, Dr. Anu Adekwaju was called out by popular Twitter influencer Omoti, where she claimed that she had paid the sum of 101 million, 1 1.2 million naira for butt implant and liposuction procedure. She claimed she started experiencing some complications after the procedure. There was public outcry across social media over the safety of Dr. Anu Adekwaju's procedures. Her clinic, Med Couture, was shut down by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. In July 2020, Dr. Anu Adekwaju was arrested and arraigned at the Federal High Court's Ikoi. She was further suspended from practicing medicine in Nigeria to further notice. She's married with two children. Doctor, do you want to make payment on your favorite international shopping site, but you find it difficult to pay online? Red Dot Pay app would definitely solve your problem. Red Dot Pay app allows you to spend your crypto like your normal Naira in your bank account. Use the code on the screen to download the app and get $5. You can create a virtual card with only $10 and a physical card you can withdraw on ATMs with a $100. Download the Red Dot app today. Terms and conditions apply. Anna's career was filled with a lot of controversies. Many blogs, especially Gislova, had done a lot of commentaries about the different botched procedures of women that had patronized Dr. Anu over the years. But for some reason, she kept escaping the law and um, it, it just seemed as if she was at large until a beauty queen passed on Neka sometime in 2019. So her family began to seek for justice for Queen Neka. Now this is the Instagram page that was created. And the first post here, if you, you can see on the screen, it says justice for Queen Neka. To get justice for late Queen Neka and other victims of Anu Med Koto, including those who are afraid to speak up. Neka met Anu through Instagram and they scheduled a consultation and after that you know, she had a surgery. The surgery was done on December 31st, 2018 until New Year's Day of 2019. So, and as we all know, the surgery did not go well because within 24 hours after surgery, Neka developed difficulty breathing. And they had put on oxygen at Medcontour, but when Medcontour couldn't do anything more to help her, she had to be 
rushed to Luth in an ambulance. And it was in Luth that she spent one month you know, at the ICU HDU, you know, and eventually she died on February 3rd, 28, uh, 2019. Luth did their best, you know, to help her. You know, they, she had a great team of consultants for different specialties taking care of her. At Luth, they found out that she, she was operated by Dr. Anu with infected instruments. So she had developed severe sepsis, that's uh, infection of the bloodstream. From severe sepsis, she had, um, she also had fat embolism, which was what made her not to, you know, breathe well, to have developed those respiratory problems. Um, her severe sepsis led to sepsis, septic shock, which is a situation where the organs of the body begin to shut down. Neka really suffered. For the one month she stayed at Lou, she suffered. I gave it to her. She was a strong girl. She fought hard to live. Even in that very, very, very horrible condition. She had a deeply infected, you know, behind her. Uh, she had gangrene. Lou did two surgeries to evacuate the fat because Anu had injected dead fat into her which was infected so she fought so hard to live and the team of doctors that looked fought so hard for her they gave her all the antibiotics all the drugs needed but the gangrenes kept coming up after the first surgeries they grew back you know bacteria was spreading rapidly um and then when you have septic shock uh, is you know is really really bad her organs began to shut down Three days prior to her death, she developed kidney failure. Her kidneys failed. And um, the day before she died, the night before she died, she had a cardiac arrest. And they did their best to res resuscitate her, but, and that was it, Neka passed away on February 3rd, 2019, after suffering from the infection and all the horrible things that she incurred after the surgery. Following the public outcry on the death of Miss Oneka Onziligbo, Dr. Anu came out and did a rebuttal of the accusations about her misconduct and malpractices. Please watch the video. Hi everyone, good evening. I am Dr. Anu. Um, I have been seeing all the stories online and I've decided to respond to them. I'll start by stating my qualifications and then um, I'll briefly talk about um, the issue of the patient who passed on. Um, um, I have a degree, uh, an MBBS degree, which means medicine bachelor, bachelor of surgery. I also am a cosmetic surgeon and I'm trained with American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery. I'm a physician member and um, I've done well over 300 patients, 300 procedures, successful procedures. None of our, I've never lost a patient in my facility. No patient has ever died in my facility. Now the issue of the girl who died a year ago, um, the beauty queen, she um, had the procedure done with us. Um, I cannot really say so much because of um, breach of confidentiality and it is very unfair that the videos of this lady will be posted up like that. I, I believe people should respect the dead and not just be after um, fame or after getting traffic on their blogs and if there really is a problem I believe um, they should, you know, go through the right channel instead of putting sensitive um, contents of a patient who's dead online. Um, I sympathize with the family and um, may her soul rest. Oh God, may her soul rest in peace. Um, she did not die in our facility. She had the procedure done. She had the pneumonia, and that was why she went to loot in the first place. She walked to loot herself. She was um, in loot for over a month. They made her sit on a bomb, I mean, lie on a bomb, discontinued antibiotics medication, which is a problem which um, may co uh, make the patient resistant to that particular um, class of antibiotics. This patient was mismanaged in loot. 
Luke should be the one answering certain questions on how they managed this patient for over a month and she died. As um, a doctor, as a physician, on my part, I I did my best. However, I do not, um, patient was fine. She didn't have any post-op complications. She was doing okay. She had a, she had breathlessness. She had a pneumonia. And there is evidence to show that she did not have fat in her lungs, fat embolism or pulmonary embolism, you know. Now, this is a medical, con- is a medical condition. And I referred to, um, them in Lutz because they have the respiratory units and they could manage such conditions. Um, I had no idea they were going to mismanage the patients. So they discontinued her drug. She wasn't on it for some time. She was on her bomb. She was supposed to turn frequently or not um, sit on the bomb, you know, but then they had to make her stay on the bomb. They do not have experience in this aspect of medicine, which is um, the aspect of um, um, cosmetic surgery. It is not yet a popular um, field. People don't really know so much about it. Only a few people do it in Nigeria. These are my personal information. However, just to clear your doubts, Dr. Anne. malpractices and misconduct. The Nigerian Association of Plastic Surgeons, Reconstructive and Aesthetics, they issued a public warning on their on their website, NAPRA. So they said there have been reports of incidences where person, persons requiring aesthetic cosmetic surgeries have landed in the hands of persons not trained to carry out such procedures and at times in dubious facilities. Surgeries in these circumstances have often ended up with preventable severe complication and at times death. Regrettably, this trend appears to be on the increase as more media reports shows and in some instances occurring outside the shores of our dear country by the same individuals. The Association of Plastic that have Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgery is deeply about concerned mal- about this unfortunate by development. And misconduct by However, Dr. we should inform the public women that would have none their of lessons our registered members have been involved in medical patronage from qualified institutions or go abroad qualified institutions because they also have quacks abroad but that was not to be and it will make one wonder what are we willing to do what lengths would women go through to achieve the perfect body is it a case of insecurity is it a case of false marketing what exactly would propel women to go ahead to patronize a quack after there had been series of call-outs over the years. Because if we take our minds back, blogs like Gist Lover, QT Jews, they publicized the fact that Dr. Anu was a quack. Amidst other allegations of spiritual manipulations and all of that. But for some reason, other women still patronized her. One of such persons is a popular influencer who almost died on the, on, on the table of Dr. Anu's cosmetic surgery, Omotsi. Listen to her story yourself you want to do love yourself love your body if you can still work on your body fine and if you decide to get surgery please i am begging you please avoid med control please avoid med control please i'm literally battling for my life every day and i'm like i don't want to talk about this thing now i don't really I don't even think I have, like, I'm mentally okay to talk about the things I went through and all the damage, like, that was done to me, like, the, the expense, like, the, like, I will, I'm literally, like, financially drained right now, but I'll be fine. I'm okay. I'm getting treatment. I'll be fine. I'll be okay. My name is Omotola Tai Wote I'm 28 years, and I'm popularly known as Omotse. I met Dr. Anu because I'd want to top up, top up of 
my house. BBL and I put suction. My belly, no flash fish. I won't come off fast for there. Still put down for my house. December 31st, now so I go pay 1.2 million to our account. After the surgery, I started having complications. I started having belly bones, waist bone, waist numb, and after two months, I started having fat necrosis. Fat necrosis is when liquid fats that are stored into like dead start coming out from like the thing will just come out like boil. You can't burst. You start to decommode the fat. The woman when she inflict on me, see the heat. I see the ghost with that every two, two days in tavern. And to dress the wound, sometimes 7,000, sometimes 10,000. It depends. Because sometimes I feel open the wound. Even another fat because it's done they decide. They will not they will need the operation to dig that one out. I called her several times after this whole thing. She no pick the call. Like I said, she blocked the number. The only time when she called me where I don't respond and when I go to buy. And I tell him, say, I'm not there in the country. Say, if I reach, I will call her. Before then, she come hospital to come see us for fully. But when she day, she gets issues. And usually, when you advise patients on waiting to do after surgery and they no follow up because they feel, say, they savvy how to take care of themselves, if they give issues. And at the end of the day, they will say that the doctor calls them. People, they always confuse the two. Plastic surgery and cosmetic surgery. The two not be the same thing. And people, they always start saying, I know they are uh, for NAPRAS group, which is Association of Plastic Surgeons of Nigeria. I'm not a plastic surgeon, and I never ever call myself plastic surgeon. I'll be cosmetic surgeon. We focus on liposuction and to become a cosmetic surgeon or to simply do liposuction, the basic requirements now MBBS, which is Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery. Every doctor will get MBBS now, physician and surgeon, first of all. That one first gave me the right to feed you like a social. Secondly, I go for certificate courses for this field and I then certified to practice cosmetic surgery. Study awareness. Another victim also went to patronize Dr. Anu and cried out. According to this blog, they say founder of Med Kuto Cosmetic Surgery Clinic, Dr. Anu Oluakbo Adepoju, popularly known as Dr. Anu, has made the headlines again. over an alleged failed procedure of an unnamed female client in Abuja. The alleged victim narrated her ordeal to a popular Instagram blog, Gist Lovers, alleging that she's suffering, she's suffering from fat necrosis due to the procedure. Fat necro is a condition that occurs when a person experiences an injury to an area of fatty issues which leads to the death of healthy fat. This can result in the fat being replaced with the oily content of fat cells. The term necrosis means the cells have died. The best the big question is why would anyone about to do surgery refuse to do due diligence by researching the doctor they are about to use so the lady in her messages said um okay the person sends message messages to the blogger and the blogger was like you are mad very mad when we were making awareness about her were you sleeping then then she responded and said i live abroad i live in new york i didn't know anything about annie until i came down to nigeria i haven't been in nigeria for 10 years it was after the surgery i started hearing things about her for real you don't have to be mean with to me i just started following her with all this going on the family 
proper of investigative the journalist to co- the matter we need to commend and them because Dr. Anu's they hospital did not was shut down. It was shut down and she was she was taken to court. The matter was in court for a while. Then these were the court documents that that was was in public domain. The court matter lingered at some point. It looks like justice was nowhere in sight. And for many years, Dr. Anu went under. Even though some people suspected that she still carried out her malpractices under the radar. Until recently, speculation started flying around that she had left the cosmetic surgery side of things and started giving cocktails to certain individuals. We cannot confirm whether these allegations are true or not, but the rumors that was going on was that certain individuals, certain um, sellers, um, um, traders on, on, on the internet were patronizing her. Some people even raised concerns for people like Jaruma, Fifi the Moon, and some other women because they all had similarities. We're going to look at that in another video. And that was what was circulating until this video of Dr. Anu started circulating of her not looking like herself. The allegations or the rumors at the time was that she was also taking the cocktails that she was preparing for her clients. Unfortunately, the story that Dr. Anu passed came out last week. May her soul rest in peace. But this whole story, this whole ordeal is a cautionary tale for every and anyone. There are so many sides to it, from people who are insecure to people who fall into the hands of um, quacks as a result of marketing. Just a lot, a lot, a lot to this story. We pray that all the parties involved, the victims that could not speak out, the family of the late Nekaun Ziligo, as well as other victims that we didn't even hear about in the public because they were scared. Because like you guys, we see, we saw at some points, Dr. Anu seemed untouchable, like nobody could touch her. But even if the systems in a country is so corrupt, you cannot run away from God. You cannot run away from the cries of mothers. You cannot run away from the cries of families who would have cried from a place of deep sorrow. Because one of the things people were mentioning and they were saying was that in the face of Anu's malpractices, she had this braggadocious attitude like you can't do anything to me because i know people they even claims that at some point certain organizations and associations were shielding her but today where's all of that it's a lesson for all of us to learn thank you so much guys i'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>